Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to use the position vector and the derivative of position vector to describe motion. In this case, we're going to do motion around the circle. Let's take the same circle that we had before with radius 2, but now we're going to differentiate between the variable t, the parametric variable, which is now going to represent time, and theta, of course, now is going to be the angle that gives us an angle reference to the x-axis. But instead of describing the position around the circle in terms of the angle theta, we're going to describe the position of the, around the circle as a function of time. So the parametric variable is going to be time, and this is now going to be our equation. That the position as a function of time is going to be equal to 2, because the radius of the circle is equal to 2, times the cosine of omega t in the i direction, plus 2 times the sine of omega t in the j direction. Omega is the angular frequency. In this case, the angle of frequency is going to be 4 pi radians per second, which means we're traveling around the circle twice per second, two revolutions per second, because omega is 4 pi radians per second. So, how do we define then velocity? Well, first what we're going to do is instead of writing omega, we're going to write 4 pi, because that's what omega is, is uh, equal to. Omega is going to be a constant, 4 pi radians per second. And so now our position vector can be defined in terms of 4 pi times t instead of omega times t. And then if we take the derivative of that, which then of course will be the velocity vector along the path of travel. So in this case, if we take the velocity vector and we look at t equals 0, we're going to end up with a, a vector like this. So this is going to be our velocity vector as a function of time when time is equal to 0, right? In this case, that will be when we're at the origin, or not, not the origin, but when we're on the right side of the circle right there. And so when we take the derivative of the position vector, dr dt, and the parametric variable is t, then you can see that we have the derivative of cosine is a negative sign, and the derivative of 4 pi t is 4 pi, multiplied that times 2, we get 8 pi. Same on this side, the derivative of sine is a cosine, the derivative of 4 pi t would be 4 pi, multiplied times 2, you get 8 pi. So now you can see this will be now the velocity vector along the path of travel. So now when we let t equal 0, just like what we drew on the board, the velocity when t equals equal to 0, we get minus 8 pi times the sine of 0 in the i direction, plus 8 pi times the cosine of 0 in the j direction. Of course, the sine of 0 is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, so we end up with 8 pi in the j direction, in the y direction. So as I've drawn here, we have a velocity of 8 pi in that direction. Now let's check to see if that also makes sense, because after all, if we're traveling around the circle twice every second, that means we travel around the circle once every half second. So one revolution in a half second, and a revolution would be around the circle, and the distance around the circle is 2 pi r, so we travel 2 pi r in a half second, or double that in a full second, 4 pi r in a full second, and since r, the radius of the circle, is equal to 2, that means we're traveling 8 pi every second, and notice that the 8 pi per second is exactly what we found here to be the velocity vector at time equals 0. This would be the velocity in the y direction, there's zero velocity in the x direction, so obviously this velocity should match this velocity if we did things correctly. And since they match, it must be correct, this is how we define the velocity along the path of travel around the circle based upon the position vector defined over here. That's how it's done.